What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Thursday, August 8th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy News Beat Stand Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, in 2024, the Biden administration churned out 1.2 trillion in new regulations. Ouch. Next up, an opinion piece from the friend of the show, David Blackman. The Biden-Harris energy policy is a mess that Kamala Harris now fully owns. Next up, Biden is dumping millions of tax dollars, or billions of tax dollars, excuse me, into, quote, green projects before leaving office. We expect that, no doubt. Next up, Aramco CEO, quote, LNG is on our radar screen. Over to our favorite state next, California Energy Commission proposes state takeover of oil refineries, the communist state of California, close to China, but who knows there. Next, and finally in the news segment, court pulls permit for next decade's U.S. LNG export terminal. Oh, yikes. After that stool then tossed over to me, I will quickly cover what happened in the oil and gas markets today, mainly cover crude oil inventories and looking at the rebounding prices. We will cover all that and a bag of chips, guys. As always, I am Michael Tanner, joined by Stuart Turley. Where do you want to begin? Hey, let's start with our buddies over there in the Biden administration. In 2024, Biden administration turned out 1.2 trillion. I get choked up just saying that in new regulations. Let me tell you how this happened. Biden has added more financial and administrative burden from regulatory activities than any other former presidents, Donald Trump or Barack Obama, totaling $1.69 trillion from Inauguration Day to August 2nd, 2024. 42 proposed rules have taken effect that would add $46 billion in compliance costs. According to the AAF, the Biden administration added 982 final rules from federal, federal regulations so far unbelievable paperwork and headaches it's pretty unbelievable i mean that's a stack 308 million hour or three is it that that's 308 million pages yes or hours pages uh, hours oh. in paperwork hours in 68.9 million hours in paperwork with 23 million coming in the final rules yeah, pretty, pretty crazy. Wow. I, I I mean, what do you do? The Trump administration added a thousand new final rules over his four years, but ended up with a positive net burden of 100 billion and then added 199 million paperwork hours. So there is almost tripling what Trump did, quadrupling. Yeah. No, hey, it's definitely, uh, it's a lot of paperwork. I was trying to calculate in my mind how much, how long that pay, you know, how many people you'd need to crank out all that paperwork. You'd need a big staff. Well, the only, this goes into the jobs reports then, and that is the only jobs that are being created are illegal in government. So let's go to the next story here, Michael. David Blackman, the Harris Biden energy policy is a mess that Kamala Harris now fully owns and her entertaining uh, vice president pick. I'll tell you what, holy smokes, the debt funded grants totaling 2.2 billion to help fund eight power transmission projects more than a thousand miles Mm -hmm. across 18 states. This is the single biggest land grab the United States has ever seen. Given the language, it also talks about the hardening of the transmission systems to protect them against extreme weather. It also seems more odd that the specified projects would do anything to upgrade systems like Texas, Florida, or Louisiana, or Alabama. Those states are historically the most vulnerable, and they're not even on the list. <laughs> Un- unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. I Let mean, me go to she's w- going to have to own the energy policy. It's, that's what happens. Let me go to one other key thing in this nugget, and that is we are about to go possibly potentially to war. In fact, there's warnings tonight. Do not go into Iranian airspace. Michael, who is imports the most oil from iran india china india south korea and number four is the united states the united states ding this is despicable all right 
Let's go to the next one here. Hey, we keep just bringing out the truth here. Biden is dumping billions of tax dollars into green projects before leaving office. Holy smokes. With its July 22 announcement of his dispersing $4.3 billion in taxpayer-funded grants for an assortment of climate projects around the country, the EPA secured loot for very grateful recipients. How come we didn't get any, Michael? We need to talk to accounting on this. Yeah, well, unfortunately, uh, I'm accounting, so we didn't get any, trust me. There are 1.7 to 11 factories to help finance the manufacture of electric vehicles and their components. Did anybody tell them that the electric vehicle market is failing? And like Intel got, I believe it was $18 billion to build out of the CHIPS Act, and they just laid off 80,000 employees, whatever the number was. I mean, it was an unbelievable number of employees, 15,000 mm -hmm. employees at, at Intel. Wow. Yeah. This is just money being thrown away. No, it, it, it really is, you know, I mean, this is what happens in a lame duck administration. They start now pushing through everything they really wanted to, but couldn't because they were going for reelection. So as I mentioned in the open, we're going to see a lot more of this. This is scary. And when you take a look at Ford losing over a hundred thousand dollars on each EV sold. Yeah. Oh my. Uh, hey, let's go to some really good news here. Saudi Aramco LNG is on our radar screen. LNG is on our radar screen. We're making big investments globally, NASA said on Tuesday. This is pretty exciting. Uh, we have big ambitions and growing our LNG portfolio. Next, they're working with next decade to buy 1.2 MTPA LNG for 20 years in this train. This is really exciting. Yeah, no, I mean, Aramco has been gearing up for this. They've been signing a bunch of these type of LNG agreements. It's clearly on there. I mean, I love I love how they're saying it's on their radar screen after they've made all of these investments prior to this. So I would love for those type of investments to just, yeah, they're just on my radar screen after we've spent billions trying to line stuff up. Boy, when you've got their kind of billions laying around, what's a few billion between friends? That adds a whole new meaning. No, nope, um, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, they're very active in getting in on all of these LNG facilities that are already permitted because... You know, as as long as this administration is still there, they're going to keep cracking down. I mean, we're about to cover it in a, in a segment below. But even though they've overturned this, doesn't mean you can still get a permit. No, and this is disgusting. Let's go to California real quick. Our buddies there in California, Energy Commission proposes state takeover of oil refineries. Holy smokes, Batman. Californians deserve a strategic transition away from petroleum transportation fuels. They also deserve a, a decent government. Listen to this one right down here in the bottom of the pair at the bottom of the article. It was, oh, wait, where's the number, Michael? Just bear with me. The state of California would purchase and own its own refineries in the state to manage supply and price of gasoline. Holy smokes. I can't believe that they're even doing this. Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty incredible. I mean, they, they, they account for over, you know, as this article mentions, California accounts for over 40% of U.S. quote-unquote zero emission vehicles, but... It's definitely not. There's still it didn't originate with in demand. I'll tell you that much. There's still 30.8 million cars and light duty trucks registered in California. 1.2 million of the 30.8 million are electric vehicles, pure battery electric vehicles. Good grief! They're idiots. Yeah, it's it's they pretty, they graduate it's, from Oklahoma State. I mean, not Oklahoma State, Oklahoma University. I mean, this is terrible. They're OSU grads. All right, let's go to this LNG facility. Let's go to the exit. Okay, court pulls permit for next decade's U.S. LNG export terminal. Here's where this story gets dicey. The Chevron deference Supreme Court ruling ruled that their ban, his ban. Biden's ban, which Harris has inherited, was actually illegal and it should not it be enforced. Well, in this case, the they went back and they said it is now. The case in front of the by the Sierra Club, the city of Port Isabel, there's some other folks listed in in the thing, sued the FERC uh, for what they claimed was failed to adequately consider the environmental impact 
and greenhouse emissions of the project is registered by the National Environmental Protection Agency Act. This is absolutely ludicrous. Here you have an investor from Saudi Aramco, biggest oil company in the world. They're producing, they're out there supplying things. Michael, we supply 24% of the natural gas and LNG to the EU. We have got to be a trading partner with our folks. If we're not a trading partner, why do business with the U.S.? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm completely there with you. It's, it's, it's pretty incredible. Even though the fact that the, you know, permit ban was or LNG ban was overturned, now they're just, you know, now they're, they're just going it after again. it with FERC. I mean, that, I mean, it was an obvious next step. I can't believe I didn't see it coming when it originally happened. City manager of Port City or Port Isabel, Jared Hockham, quote: "We are very pleased that the court has agreed with our position that development of these LNG facilities would." adversely affect our community by bringing jobs and money. No, no, he didn't say that. And the impacts of these adverse effects have not been adequately considered in the fact the courts found that the permits of these services were issued despite FERC's recognition of these impacts. Unbelievable. You can't buy this kind of OU stupid. No. I mean, they, they don't want jobs and money, in my opinion. No, they really don't. And we've got to be a good trading partner to everyone around the world, period. No, we absolutely need to. So, all right, well, day. let's go ahead and jump into oil and gas finite, guys. But before we do that, let's go ahead and pay the bills here. As always, thanks for checking us out on the world's greatest website, www.energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all your energy and oil and gas news. Stu and the team do a tremendous job making sure that website stays up to speed. Everything you need to know to be at the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy and the oil and gas business. Hit the description below for all links to the timestamps. Jump around and all of the links to the articles. Uh, you can also hit our oil and gas investment page, landing page. We're proud to partner up with Pecos Country Operating and our friends Ray Trevino over at the Crew Truth. Great, great oil and gas investment opportunity. We'd love to go ahead and talk with you about it and see how you can get your money working for yourself and become a true oilman. That's the best part about it. So we absolutely love it. Okay. Check it out. You can hit the landing page in the description below. We look forward to talking with you guys. But let's go ahead and jump in here, Stu. I mean, overall markets, not great today. We were down about three quarters of a percentage point on the S&P 500. NASDAQ down about 1.2 percentage points. A 10-year yield was actually up about 1.5 percentage points. Two-year yields fairly flat. Dollar index up about a quarter of a percentage point. We saw Bitcoin down 55,000. It's down about 1.7 percentage points from overnight. Crude oil, though. Great day, basically up three percentage points, 7537 after basically almost cracking $76. So a lot of those gains rebounded that we lost over the last few days. Brent oil, 7884. Natural gas up above two dollars again. Whoop, up four percentage points, two dollars and ninety-nine cents. XOP contract was up about six tenths of a percentage point. Main reason for higher oil was 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 the EIA crude oil inventories. Miss producer, if you can go ahead and throw this a chart up here. Here, we did see crude oil inventories fall by about 3.7 million barrels down to a total of about 429.3 million barrels for the week that ended August 2nd. That's all according to the EIA. And that was actually higher than the expectation that most analysts had at about 700,000 barrel draw. You know, quote from our friend over there, Phil, Phil Flynn over at Price Futures Group. This is starting to think of a trend six week in a row. Crude has fallen and plays into a mantra that supplies are tightening and demand is exceeding supply. Hey, that's good for prices. We did see on on Tuesday, I had a little off day that EIA is forecasting tighter supply and demand balances for 2024, raising its outlook for oil consumption, but lowering its expectations for production. Super interesting. Refinery crude runs rose by about 250,000 barrels per day. Utilization ticked up about a half a percentage point to 90.5 total capacity. We did see net crude imports up about 550,000 barrels per day. Exports were down 1.28 million barrels per day to uh, 3.64 million barrels. Barrels per day, gasoline stocks up 1.3 million barrels. Distillates rose by about 900,000 barrels. And we did see total gasoline products supplied fell by about 280,000 barrels per day. So pretty spicy, Stu, in terms of what's going on with the EIA. Things seem to be, be chucking up a little bit. So we absolutely love to see it. But, you know, that's really all I've got. We had a bunch of earnings that happened over the last few days. So as always, go to energynewsbeat.com to stay up to speed with all the earnings. But that's really all I've got. We've had a long show. I'll let you guys get out of here. Well, what else should people be worried about? Uh, don't fly in Iran. Well, good. So, I don't think anybody I don't think anybody that listens to this show was planning on that. Well, we got oil traders. 
So we'll find them. It's a good point. Last show for the week, <laughs> Stu. What what do they got? What are they going to hear tomorrow? Probably uh, Ronald Stein. Good old Ronald Stein. Love that. And then on Saturday, you're here. Our weekly recap. We'll take Sunday off, and we will be back in the chair on Mondays, guys. But with that, we're going to let you get out of here. Finish up your week. We appreciate everybody checking us out here at World's Greatest Website, EnergyNewsBeat.com. For Stuart Turley, I'm Michael Tanner. We'll see you on Monday. Thank you.